this divides out this, this is the Chopin the grand waltz he's he's got four phrases going on here let me mark them above the score there's one I hope you filled in this blank here and and gave the bass note if I need a, I'll just leave it that way and now this is kind of neat because he's he makes it look like he's going on but this is really just a little connective thing pushing you into a repetition so in a way it sounds like it's going to here but that's really the goal and this is a restart over here so this is kind of a linking thing that joins up two phrases and it all hinges on this chromatic passing tone that smooths over the divide between the two now there's no question that this is a phrase because we've heard it before and here we get it again. This is something that Chopin, Chopin really loves to do which is to obscure boundaries. He's known for this. Okay. This divide's real easy to see because it's modeled right after this one and he's gotten chromatic on us here by going to a, a flat 6 F major instead of F sharp minor but in each case it's deceptive, a deceptive cadence pretty rare to be doing this in this format deceptive cadences are often misnomers you might go to 6 but then it'll do something to do what you had wanted it to do, you know you get 5 you want the 1 here's 5 with the 1 but what will happen is even if, it, even if that happens It'll be kind of like the phrase is held in some sort of pause, but then, ah, oh, we're done. And there's no, there's a sense here of an avoided cadence, but not really a deceptive cadence. You don't want to even call it a cadence. This is really a cadence, and that's really a cadence, I think. So in this case, that, that word cadence is appropriate. In this, you're delaying closure, and then you get the authentic cadence later. Very different things going on here. Okay, so deceptive cadence for the end of the first phrase, and then the second phrase, let's compare the melodies, very different. So I'm gonna put a B there, and then um, the cadence comes here on the E, which is five, so that's a half cadence. The obscuring thing here, the link into A again, with a new goal, moving to the flat six, but still deceptive. Then the fourth phrase, see if it's modeled after the B material. Well, in a way it is, because this sort of playing with two registers comes back here. But I'm going to go ahead and give it a fresh label. A, B, A, C. Okay. Now if you're doing this diagram separately somewhere else, then make sure you also show the lengths of these things so that we're we're able to see where things occur. You know, you've got to connect somehow with the score or else these things will kind of float and you won't even know where they're occurring. So it should look like this, where you've got melodic labels at the front ends of things. You've got your cadence labels at the, at the ends of phrases. And you've got either measure numbers. I could have done measures and then done one through four five through eight and so on. That works too. And that either one will do to show us where we are in the score. We have one more cadence to label and that's this PAC here. Still an A. Okay, so in every case we've got our three different labels. And now we want to put slurs up above to show what things group together. Now there is a little bit of this going on divided into two just because you hear A coming back again. On a big scale, with one coming back here, you sense an interruption in the middle and then a restart, both in terms of a return to tonic and a return to melodic material. Okay, but you don't get a conclusive cadence until right here. The PAC ends it 
That means everything joins together as one four phrase period. When you have a four phrase period, we write double period. And double period actually has some extra baggage. It tells you a little bit more, but they're approximately equivalent. Double means it kind of divides into twice the normal lengths. We're used to two phrase periods, and if you make each of these two halves, so sort of this, this sort of format with two plus two, you've doubled the dimensions. It could have been four plus four. Here we've got four plus four, and then four plus four. And that, in that sense, it's doubled the, the normal two phrase dimensions. Okay, so it's a double period, but let's think too about uh, melodic structure. Okay, so A comes back, that makes it parallel. So it's a parallel double period. We can also look at the harmonic layout. We get to a half cadence near the middle. We have an interruption and a return to tonic. Parallel interrupted double period. That's the full label. Now, for most textbooks, it's enough just to notice that it's a double period. But uh, noticing that it's parallel interrupted helps us relate it back to a very familiar pattern. Uh, parallel interrupted, they often go together because then you get this sense of a break and a retake, a restart, that includes both the parallelness, the return to a familiar theme, and a return to the tonic harmony. That's a powerful sense of interruption and return of old things. Uh, and so it's nice to use that word uh, and relate it to that thing that, that everybody has experienced and knows so well. There isn't a, a little motive that comes back. These don't relate. It's not like AA and then B continuation. There's no sentence structure. And so in this case, there is, you could say, not applicable or just none. There is none. And uh, in periods, there is one period, this double period, that encompasses the entire excerpt. One just recapitulation of old things, and that is that if it's a period, the strongest, most conclusive cadence comes at the end. And if you're saying that this whole thing is a period, it means that each of these preceding cadences cannot be as strong as this PAC at the end. They have to be uh, less conclusive than that PAC at the end, or else this is no period. But they all are, they all are less conclusive, the deceptive cadences, the half cadence. So they join together on the basis of the cadence strength. They're weaker, they wait for the stronger to articulate an end point. Very different than, than sentence structure because sentence structure has, doesn't speak to the, the amount of conclusiveness at the end. It just speaks to a motivic pattern. That means they can coexist and we haven't seen very much of this in this set because I'm going for some fairly unique and, and interesting situations, but it is perfectly normal for there to be a period that is also a sentence because the sentence structure can tell you how it's laid out, the durations, the motives in, that form the content, but the period tells you about the ending, that this all works together as a unit because there is no stronger cadence than the final one. And for that reason, um, they, it works as a single unit. So you see how they can also coexist, but that's only because period structure and sentence structure are based on very different kinds of criterion. So we're dealing with we're dealing with closure for period, but we're dealing with motive and durational proportions when we're dealing with sentence. Very different uh, bases.